Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills, this is Logan Burgess. Today is Tuesday the 6th and we have the markets moving higher here. Corn for July trading up 9 and 3 quarter cents. Soybeans down 4 cents but nowhere near the selling pressure that we saw last Thursday and the last few days. Wheat trading up 9 and 3 quarters and Kansas City wheat trading up 15 and 3 quarter cents. One thing that was interesting to note is during the trade break this morning, we did see cancellations here, about 220,000 yep. uh, tons of uh, metric tons of, uh, of corn was canceled uh, in, that, uh, in that session. That did put a little bit of pressure immediately after the trade opened, but yep. we started rallying higher. Why was that? You know, I think it was for a number of reasons here, Cody. Not really one reason in particular was pushing uh, corn higher into the close today. First of all, I think let's take a look at here at the U.S. dollar index. As you can see here, sharp move lower today, down about half a percent, and technically a very weak move here for the dollar index. Uh, in general, a weak dollar index is going to support commodities, uh, and I think we saw that in the grain uh, complex in general today. Second of all, and I think more important than the dollar index, was the real strength that we saw out of the wheat complex, specifically the Kansas City contract. As you can see here from this chart, this is a weekly chart, and we are now approaching contract high. Uh, on the July Kansas City wheat contract. So anytime you see wheat making a strong move higher, that tends to support the corn market. Wheat and corn tend to be fairly well correlated here as we're looking at uh, future movement. So that was the second item that I think supported things. And I think the third item, and certainly not the, not the least important item, is expectations for Friday's USDA report. In that report, some analysts are expecting the USDA to revise 2013-14 corn ending stocks by as much as 100 million bushels. So uh, not surprising, I guess, that specifically for the old crop, uh, those contracts were able to shake off those cancellations a little bit and make a strong move higher uh, into the close. Yeah, absolutely, Logan. And actually, let's switch our attention a little over to soybeans here. You know, we have heard a lot of talk about the bullish uh, spreads here and yeah. about uh, really about that bullish spread between July and November soybean contract. You'll notice that this is a chart, it's a daily chart of that serial month spread. So it's a, this is the premium that you're seeing in July over the November contract. One thing you'll notice is that it has been trending up right alongside uh, well, so that soybean market move. Yeah. And uh, really in the last few days we have seen this, soy, this bull spread start to unwind. And, uh, and really we're right down around some key price levels uh, in areas that we have tested in earlier and uh, middle April. So one thing to keep in mind uh, when we're looking at this bull spread is that if we start to unwind any more, any further than where we're at right now, I would suspect that that's going to be another bearish indicator for the soybean contract or for the soybean complex. Yeah. When you look at the straight futures contracts, for July, you'll notice that that trend line has already broken. This trend line has not. This trend line between the July and the November contract has not yet broken. If it does break, I think it's just another bearish indicator here for the soybean complex. Yeah, if you want to take a look here at this spread for yourself, we have a great trading platform here at Grain Hedge that allows you to view these spread relationships, uh, just the same one that you're seeing here on Grain TV today. Additionally, to execute your own trades on those spread, spread relationships uh, if they are exchange traded spreads. So if spread trading is important to you and you're interested to take a look, call us at Grain Hedge here, 877 472 4607 is the number to reach us. Coming down the pipe here for the grain market tomorrow, we have EIA ethanol numbers out, Thursday export sales, and then Friday the big May USDA report where we're going to be getting old crop and new crop ending stock expectations. We'll be breaking down expectations for that report in detail tomorrow and Thursday here on Grain TV, so tune in then uh, to get ready for Friday's report. Thanks a lot for joining us here though on a Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow for the EIA report.